Welcome to Breakfast with the Scholar. My name is Jane. I'm Becca. I'm Ashley. I'm Hillary. I'm Alana. And today we'll be talking about how occupational therapy can be the, one of the great ideas of 20th century medicine. The key points of the lecture. What was the lecture's message for the profession, for consumers, or for society? What were the lecture's main themes and takeaway points? How do these relate to the philosophy of the profession? So our lecture's message was to focus on the critical appraisal of the essential worth of occupational therapy as a profession and whether occupational therapy is a service vital and unique enough for medicine to support and society to reward. The hypothesis upon which occupational therapy was founded by early founder early founder states that man, through the use of his hands as they are energized by mind and will, can influence the state of his own health. This is found on page 6. The lecture's main themes and takeaway points included how the role of occupational therapy would become more defined in the years to come once occupational therapy as a profession could identify the drive in man for occupation and how practitioners would continue to shape their services to fill that need. Future occupational therapy practitioners should push themselves to find ways to think and act upon how they would fill that need in their daily practice. Occupational therapy was a magnificent medical, has a magnificent medical purpose in that practitioners belong to a profession that require the mind to look at the history of man's achievements throughout civil, civilization. Occupational therapy requires practitioners to apply knowledge to help individuals and influence their health and well-being. These themes relate to the philosophy of the profession in that occupational therapy is pushed towards optimizing the ability of people to perform the activities that they need and want to do each day and thereby participate fully in society. This lecture advances the notion that occupational therapy as a profession and occupational therapists as practitioners should continue to strive towards defining themselves better as a service that pro proves to be vital and unique enough for medicine to support and for society to reward. Historical context. What were the major historical and or political and societal events that influenced the lecture? How did these events impact OT practice and spark the lecturer's thoughts or motivations? There were many historical events, both social and political, that influenced Mary Riley's legal lecture. From 1900 to 1920, there were a number of reforms in both the mental health community and occupational therapy that moved towards a more patient-centered, holistic, community-based, and comprehensive approach. Treatment for mental health disorders at this time included crafts such as weaving, basketry, and pottery. Similarly, George Edward Barton used recreation as a treatment for his own tuberculosis. The Great Depression of 1929 allowed OT is to discover the direct need between occupations and psychological disorganization, as stated on page 11 of our article. The Great Depression caused a decrease in job availability, which caused a decrease in psychological organization. The mentality of not having an occupation proved to be greater than the monetary loss. The mind needs external stimulation, and the Great Depression showed that human nature does not thrive in idleness. During the war of during the 1940s, war veterans returned to the U.S. after World War I, requiring the aid of prosthetics, assistive technology, and compensatory techniques. OT is still greatly influenced by the medical community, however, beginning to lead towards holism. In the past few years, there have been an influx of social and political events that have affected Riley's legal lecture. Social reform included the Civil Rights Movement, as well as Lyndon B. Johnson's The Great Society, which was put into place with the goal of eliminating racial injustice and poverty. Community-based living is highly regarded, and the focus of OT was on education and school-based practice. Furthermore, social reforms included education for handicapped children and the closure of large-scale mental institutions. More recently, Basic studies on bo in both Canada and the U.S. looked into sensory deprivation, which stated that the mind needs external stimulation. Now that we discussed the historical context, let's see what was going on in the professional context. Professional context. 
What were the major events and/or issues within the profession at the time of the lecture, and how are they reflected in the lecturer's message? Earlier in the century, it was discovered that active patients recovered much faster than patients who were not occupied. Psychological effects of the patients then became a topic of concern. Patients were given crafts and had the ability to work while they were in a hospital. By having patients engage in activities, they were becoming more independent. Also, socioeconomic principle was in effect within these communities due to the fact that those who were handicapped then had the ability to work. It was a concern that if occupational therapy was unable to provide societies within, with their needs, the profession would eventually die out. Prior to this time, America fought in two world wars and was in a depression. The country, as well as the profession, were still being affected by these events. During the last decade, there was, has been a stress on the practice to expand, but at this time, the profession had yet been able to clearly define their role in society. In the 1960s, the profession was still searching for a direction and there were demands that were placed on the practice that were conflicting. But the profession was still constantly growing and changing, especially because in the 60s, the profession was fairly new. Occupational therapy had just focused on societal problems and how they were related to the profession. The relation to the lecture's message is that occupational therapy needed to form as a profession and have specific guidelines as to what our purpose was in the medical field. Impact of lecture. Consider the impacts of the lecture on the profession from multiple perspectives. How did the lecture impact the profession's role in meeting society's current and future occupational needs? What impact did the lecturer hope to have? What impacts might the other lecturer at the table identify? What impacts would a therapist or OT student identify today? The impact of the lecture on the profession's role in meeting society's current and future occupational needs is that it encouraged occupational therapy to take on a more active and holistic approach in patient care. According to Mary Riley, a man, through the use of his hands, as they are energized by mind and will can influence the state of his own health. For example, in therapy sessions when a client participates in activity and they continue to make improvements, it can inspire them and propel them forward into independence. The impact the lecturer hoped to have was that she wanted to set the direction for occupational therapy as it was still a pretty new profession and still defining its role in medicine. She wanted occupational therapy to be more than just a physical aspect of care. She thought occupational therapy should have a more biosocial impact. So the model we have here um, goes more in depth of biosocial model. Uh, Mary Wright stated, if it were not desired, desirable to be productive, the skill and practices of occupational therapy would be irrelevant. She believed that occupational therapy should lie in the areas of human productivity and creativity. The impact that the other lecturers at the table might identify is the true importance and value of occupational therapy to healthcare needs. The other lecturers would have to now shift their plan of care from being just technically skilled to now encompassing a more philosophical and theoretical plan of care. That means gone are the days of treating the patient physically. Their mental health has to be nurtured as well. The impact that an OT and a student therapist would identify today from the lecture is that occupational therapy takes on a more holistic approach in treatment as opposed to some other healthcare field. Occupational therapy is a valuable and vital profession that incorporates different therapy aspects in order to get the patient to do the meaningful occupations in their lives and lead them to more independence. Hope you enjoyed our Breakfast with the Scholar. Tune in next time.